What is the crack guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Finding Yourself for Kyle Duffy and if you're new here, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please check out my others on my channel and if you enjoy what you see, please consider liking and subscribing and follow me along my YouTube and podcasting journey. In anticipation for this year's Oscars, I plan to discuss, dissect and review several movies that are up for nominations in the category of Best Film. Today I will be reviewing and discussing The Power of the Dog, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Jesse Plummins, Kristen Stewart and Cody Smith McPhee. I'm sure this movie has been the talking point of many conversations leading up to the Oscars. It has garnered a lot of attention and is up for nominations in several categories, including Best Film, Best Leading Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress in a Movie, as well as Best Director. In this video I'd like to discuss why I found The Power of the Dog an absolutely captivating movie that is definitely, in my opinion, going to sweep the Oscars. First off, Benedict Cumberbatch's performance in this movie is next to none. I think by now it's very publicly accepted that Benedict Cumberbatch is an amazing actor. But for the longest time, he's played very likeable characters. For instance, Doctor Strange in the Marvel Universe, he's a very likeable character. You're always rooting for him. He's one of the good guys. As well as that, his role as Sherlock. He is the protagonist in that movie, not an antagonist. And he's someone you're rooting for as well. He's very likeable. And as an actor and as a person, he's very likeable. He's very charismatic. But I think I hadn't seen a movie where he played a real bastard. He played someone that you're not supposed to like at all and the movie does a very good job at making sure we know as an audience member there's nothing that we should align ourselves with in Benedict Cumberbatch's character in this movie. He's not supposed to be likeable, he's supposed to be someone that we root against and that we actively hate throughout the movie. His performance was so good in this movie, I didn't hate him for one minute. I didn't like him. I think the movie does a great job in making sure you don't like him because again he's a rotten character but I did not hate him and I think that's down to the fact that he is so charismatic even playing an antagonist and an asshole in the movie he still comes out as very likable. His accent is spot on. He plays a rancher in the 1800s. I don't know what part of America they're in but it's the 1800s and he plays a rancher. Now we all know that Benedict Cumberbatch has mastered accents in the past. He's very adept with playing American characters, so his American accent is spot on. But I believed him as his rancher. I believed that it was the 1800s. I believed that he had this pain in his voice and that every sentence out of his mouth he meant what he said and that it was a life of misery he was living because his character in this movie does have an air of misery and a fog of anger around him. I just loved Benedict Cumberbatch's character and his performance in this movie really brought me in to the atmosphere and allowed me to sit next to the characters in this movie and believe that I was looking at someone in the 1800s. I also loved the cinematography in this movie. At times it came across as strikingly beautiful to watch and physically pleasant as well and even though this movie does have a number of characters who are in very tense relationships there's a lot of conflict in this movie and the scenes reflect that there's a lot of underlying tension in each of the interactions in this movie especially between Benedict Cumberbatch's character and Kirsten Dunst's character during the majority of the movie they're at odds with each other they're playing psychological mind games and this is where Benedict Cumberbatch's character comes into his own and really cements himself as a real antagonist in this movie. Like I mentioned, Benedict Cumberbatch's character plays these psychological mind games with Dunn's character and this is all in an effort to kind of make her break down because he does not want her moving into his house after marrying his brother. He does not have one iota of sympathy for her. She's a single mother and I think she's an alcoholic in this movie as well. And he pushes her to this breaking point where she goes back on the beer and back on the alcohol. And he uses that as an advantage to then turn her son against her as well. So she's completely isolated in the house and feels like she has no one to support her. During these scenes of conflict, the director, Jane Campion, by the way, who did an excellent job, uses subtle music 
to let us know that there is an element of dread and there is an element of anxiety that creeps over us when we watch these scenes and the music really plays on our anxiety and kind of heightens every scene to this climactic ending and climactic finish in the movie even though the movie is not scary the music helps build the atmosphere of dread of anxiety because i think as audience members we can't stand when there's an underlying tension it always kind of creeps under our skin and makes us feel like there's going to be some climactic conflict and some big scene where the whole conflict gets laid out on the table and we get that climactic fight or a confrontation that we think the whole movie has been building to in the first place but power of the dog kind of does a bait and switch and we never get that big climactic fight or confrontation there's subtle confrontations throughout the movie between several different characters in this movie including Benedict Cumberbatch's character and Jesse Plummett's character who are brothers in the movie there's a confrontation about Benedict Cumberbatch's character not receiving the news of his brother's engagement very well and mistreating his wife there's confrontations between Cumberbatch's character and Kirsten Dunst's character at the beginning of them first meeting and I find this confrontation the most revealing of all because in this confrontation you see the style of character and the type of person Benedict Cumberbatch is playing as Phil and you see what type of person Dunst's character is as well as Rose and Phil in this movie played by Cumberbatch he's very blunt he's very argumentative mean stubborn and he doesn't hide this he doesn't shy away from it and he uses these traits of his personality to successfully intimidate Rose in their first encounter to let her know that he is not going to play the nice brother-in-law and as far as he is concerned she is not welcome on their farm and she is not going to be a part of this family even though most of the scenes and the situations in this movie could seem very mundane to someone who's used to watching high-speed car chases and intense action movies it's all about how the actors approach the scenario and the acting and the acting choices in this movie make the movie better all around first of all Benedict Cumberbatch as I said makes the movie a hundred times better I think the casting was spot on with this and especially with the supporting roles as well Jesse Plummins always does a great job in a supporting role he really hasn't cemented himself as a lead character a lead actor I don't think he sells the movie by himself but as a supporting character he always does a great job he's a great character actor in my opinion again as I said it was great to see Kirsten Dunst back on screen and playing a very vulnerable character in Rose I thought she did an excellent job but the standout surprise performance for me was from Cody Smith McPhee a young Australian actor he plays Peter in the movie Rose's son and he's actually up for a nomination for best supporting actor in a movie in this year's Oscars and I think he has a good chance of winning it because there's many scenes in this movie where he is right alongside Cumberbatch and the two of them have very tense scenes together a lot of conversational pieces a lot of monologues and a lot of high tense back and forth kind of cat and mouse games are played in this movie and Peter at the latter end of the movie the second half of the movie he becomes his mother's protector and almost takes on the responsibility to try and beat Phil at his own game and play mind games back with him and this makes for a very climactic finale and end to the movie because it leaves you to question whether Peter knew what he was doing all along whether this vengeance was accidental on his part or whether he had more malice in his character than you first figured overall Cody Smith McPhee's performance in this movie was a standout surprise performance for me like I said he had many scenes with Cumberbatch and held his own in these scenes which was very impressive like I mentioned I think Power of the Dog is going to sweep the Oscars Benedict Cumberbatch, Cody Smith McPhee and Kirsten Dunst all up for nominations and I think that Jane Campion has a great chance to win Best Director I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on The Power of the Dog if you've watched the movie how you think it's going to perform in this year's Oscars let me know in the comments section below hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to check out my podcast Finding Yourself available up on all major podcast platforms including Spotify and Anchor FM 
This has been Finding Yourself with Kyle Duffy. Thanks for listening.